You know you're in for a good anime season, and especially a good Overlord episode, when this is the first image you actually see in the episode. But the idea of Utopia was a brilliant way to end this episode, because it sets in motion, I think, probably one of the most interesting Overlord seasons to date. Because there's a lot of potential with the idea of what looks to be an undead creature that humanity is naturally going to push back against because... I mean, physically look at what you're seeing. But the way he's navigating things like the Adventures Guild is quite interesting and I would have to say pretty big brain. The whole idea of saying like he can't really go adventuring because look at him and look at his allies. Immediately they're going to raise their pitchforks and they're going to try to kill. And the idea of using the Adventures Guild no longer as simply monster hunters or general fetch quests but rather making them into true adventurers, provides for a really interesting world that's about to open up in ways we really haven't seen. And I like the idea of the Guildmaster countering him, being like, are you simply just wanting to invade? And then Ayn saying, I mean, I have the military might. If I wanted to simply do that, I could without much struggle. And the idea of, like, saying, do you look after the lizard men? Do you look after all the intelligent creatures that aren't human? And, you know, the idea of humans, like, humans never thinking about that. It's just so interesting to see that for such world domination mentality, how he's going to be able to navigate humanity, at the very least, some key players in humanity as it stands, that he now has control over, and make them really see him as not an evil being, an evil supreme being, as he does what he does with all of his random subordinates who are just immediately thinking... He's up to no good at every possible moment. I mean, even before all that, I was just having a great time watching Overlord. I mean, Ayn's definitely got more physical than we've seen him be in almost three seasons combined. Not only was the lap sitting moment absolutely fantastic, the idea that, you know, the thirstiest girl alive, and I mean, if you can find a thirstier girl in any anime season, bless your heart, because, I mean, she really steals the show. The fact that she was just so into it, and the fact that he actually let her, to then even, like, the father-son moment with Pandora's actor, which, I mean, talking with some people prior to the season starting, because I did a video covering my thoughts on the first three seasons, and Pandora's actor came up a few times because Pandora's actor is such a fun personality that in terms of him being himself, we saw one time in all three seasons. Though we did see him a bunch of times being Ainz as his body double. But it's a lot different seeing the man in uniform and doing his very cringy things that Ainz just tries so desperately to break the programming of. And the fact that he ultimately is like, you know, I kind of consider you my creation but don't go telling other people, and then he starts calling him father, and I'm like, we already call him Papa Bone Daddy, but the fact that we're now getting into that territory brings a grin to my face. But it was just so cool, because one thing about, like, watching something like Isekai Quartet is you got a taste of some of these moments, or some of the pairings, a little more than what you have gotten up until the anime at this point. Like, we got a bit more Pandora's actor, we got a bit more Hamske, and the idea of his kind of like bromance with the Death Knight and stuff like that. But I think the thing that has always made Overlord so great since pretty much the beginning of the show, I mean, it really started kicking in with season two, but the idea of the world and how it opens up, it's not simply Ainz's perspective and what he sees. And yes, there's some people who watch Overlord and say when it's not focusing on Ainz, then it's boring. To those people, I honestly say you're missing the entire point because Overlord is more than just his perspective, which makes it so much more complex. And based on what they're setting up here, I wouldn't be shocked if this season does once again shift perspectives with an adventure group who then ventures into new land, and then what we see there, and then transitioning back to Ainz and how he might deal with that moment. And I think this episode just kind of represents everything I like about Overlord, and really nothing I would criticize. Because one, you get a lot of Ainz content immediately shifting back into his perspectives and how he basically interacts with everything. The idea that someone, you know, one of the maids is watching as he sleeps, he's really just reading. He then switches the book to something a little more acceptable that if they discover it, they're not going to raise an eye. As then, you know, there's all these like little things he does because, you know, he's just an office worker. He doesn't know shit about running a country. So when it comes time to approve all the different things, he makes it look like he's doing it, but really he's just Oh, flipping a couple pages, approve, and then sometimes he brings up a remark to make it look like he's questioning so they don't raise an eyebrow. I'm fully convinced they wouldn't raise an eyebrow even if he just told them to do it and didn't actually take up too much responsibility. 
But you do gotta love how he's playing the role so well, while simultaneously just building all these different relationships. And seriously, this was the most flustered we've seen him in a single episode in some time. Like, it wasn't just one set, he had to like calm himself down back to that neutral state or his passive ability did. Just quite a few times, and his new drip, his new wardrobe, I mean, I was expecting something a little more funky just based on his reaction. I actually thought, all things considered, it's not the most outrageous outfit he could have been placed with, and seemingly the response to the just different folk, you know, really enjoyed it. But I'm excited because the idea of how Season 3 ended with the Kingdom invasion and everything like that, the idea of setting up his adventurer counterpart is like, opposing if he steps too far, but the idea that Peace has been achieved for this area, like, really, there's seriously no danger as it stands. But the idea of using the adventurers as a way to explore and branch off his reach more and more is quite interesting. It's something you really can't compare to other anime stories that are out there. And that's what makes Overlord so special is that it is goofy, it is funny, it is brutal at times. But it's the way they explore this world, the way they open it up, and the way they give you so many different perspectives outside of the central man himself and it allows for it to feel like such a deep and compelling world, and I've heard nothing but good things about the content that this season should be adapting, so I imagine it's going to be an absolutely incredible season. For me, Overlord was one of those shows that I find gets better with each season, and I'm really excited to see what they decide to pull this one, because given how much Ayn's focus we got this episode, we got a good idea of where it wants to go, and I'm going to be interested to see how much this season will focus specifically on him, and how much they will do, like in Seasons 2 and 3, branching off to those other perspectives, getting a good idea of what they're going through before shifting back to Bone Daddy, and then making that entire stuff just so much more compelling than it already was. There was definitely some fun jokes in this episode that I really liked, such as, like, when Mare and, you know, the twins are talking about how, like, hey, you know, why don't we have, like, the boys dress as girls because of each of the craters, you know, the original players that he played with, just giving different program commands, and... The fact that he just goes so overboard and is like, holy shit, that could have been a completely different thing that might have just happened. But I also like how he sneaks in his own ideas of what to do in the middle of that giant pile of paperwork, you know, saying, hey, we're going to ask all the different people what they want to see happen with the kingdom and everything like that. Seeing our girl get like, that's a dumbass idea as he's like, well, that was actually my idea. But hey, you know, we have to make sure everyone's ideas are accepted. I said no punishment, no matter what idea is thrown our way. He's doing a good job at navigating in a way of like, you would never be able to guess at face value that he wasn't a supreme being, that he wasn't a world conquering man himself. Instead, but getting inside his head, you really get a sense of he has no goddamn idea what he's doing. But for being the luckiest bastard at world domination... He doesn't have much to complain about, all things considered. But this was a great first episode. So excited for Overlord Tuesdays. Thoughts down below. What do you hope to see this season? Let me know. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new around here. Till next time, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.